creating the future. After deciding to redesign Jorgopol, Saznavka military base, Pochinki, school, Yaznaya Poliana, and Milta Power, we split into six teams to focus on the background story of Erangel, missing features that can be supplemented, and gameplay depth as the three main areas of change to ensure holistic improvements in all aspects, from the map to the gameplay. Let's start with Jorgapol. Jorgapol was originally a port in Erangel, and it's undergone a huge upgrade in Mission Ignition. Early in the design process, we discussed the positioning of Jorgapol. What kind of port was it? What should be its main function? The first thing we did was to classify the various ports of the world according to their different purposes. Some examples of ports are commercial ports, fishing ports, marinas, military ports, and industrial ports. What type of port is Jorgapol? In the original Erangel, we saw many containers, warehouse buildings, and huge lifting equipment. But after Dynahex arrived, they wanted to use Jorgapol to transport energy, resources, and materials to Erangel so they could continue the research. Naturally, the fruits of their research would also be exported via Jorgapol. So after discussing this, we decided to classify Jorgapol as an industrial port and designed it accordingly. We studied many industrial ports and asked our colleagues in different parts of the world to investigate the industrial ports of different cities. After referencing real industrial ports, we realized that apart from the areas for transportation, handling cargo, and the storage facilities. There are many industrial office areas and a few residential areas around the port. To design Jorgopol as realistically and reasonably as possible, we divided the areas by their functions. The industrial area was kept close to the warehouse area, while the residential area was kept away from the industrial area to ensure a higher quality of life for port workers. We also took the efficiency of staff and the movement of goods when the port is operating into consideration. To do this, we watched many videos of ports, bought a lot of tabletop games and mini car models, and played the games among our team to simulate the movement of people and goods to help build more realistic, futuristic scenes. Lionel, the PUBG mobile art director said, after confirming the changes to the main areas, we started upgrading everything else. Our vision for a smart port of the future is based on information integration and breakthroughs in smart technology. The overall development of the port should reflect more unmanned automation and 3D design elements. Therefore, in the design of the port, key changes were made to the combination of the integrated planning of transportation lines and the layout of warehouse areas to make the Jorgopol into a smart integrated port. We also added many dynamic features for this purpose. These indoor and outdoor dynamic platforms introduce timing elements and different routes to the combat experience. In addition, as a key port used to import construction resources and various equipment to Erangel, Jorgopol needs to accommodate a large flow of people and have a high logistics capacity. Regarding combat-related designs at Jorgopol, we planned for close-range firefights to take place at the port and mid-range combat to take place in the warehouse area. We look forward to players having new and exciting combat experiences here. Next up is the Tech Center. Dynahex transformed the original school into a brand new Tech Center. This is where Dynahex's most advanced technologies are kept. When designing the Tech Center, we thought the design should be centered around the staff and equipment. In most cases, scientific and technological developments lead to improvements in staff and equipment without excessive upgrading of buildings and spaces, which is why we believe that within the next 30 years, there shouldn't be huge changes in the design of buildings of the lab. However, Advancements in technology lead to more advanced research equipment and verification methods, which improve the research efficiency of scientific researchers and promote the smart integration of the tech center. Therefore, when designing the tech center, we divided it into the experimental area, isolation area, demonstration area, meeting room, storage area, and so on, based on their functions. The first floor of the tech center is a public area that is accessible to all. The demonstration area and meeting room are located here. The second floor is the research area and can only be accessed by staff. 
The lab is located at the heart of this area and is used for Dynahex's research with the highest level of security. The other areas provide additional research support. At the current stage, the main building of the tech center has basically been completed, and the surrounding buildings are also in the final stage of construction. Other than the design, we've also added many new combat elements to the tech center. We hope these in-game elements will give players new combat experiences. For example, we added an alarm system to the front door of the lab, which sounds an alarm when the front door is damaged. This is an extremely interesting design, as players can catch the attention of other players by triggering the alarm, and it creates many strategic possibilities. Naturally, we've also prepared some small gifts for those who are brave enough to enter the lab. Another new feature we like is the tempered glass ceiling. The addition of the tempered glass ceiling introduces more information that can be used in combat at the tech center. The tempered glass ceiling cannot be broken, but players can look through it to see what enemies are doing inside the tech center. If a member of your team acts as a scout on the ceiling, you'll have a higher chance of winning battles in the tech center. The outdoor elevator enables you to move quickly, which introduces a lot of uncertainty to battles. You should note that it isn't necessary for players to stand on the elevator to activate it. You can also activate it with items. You can all try to use the elevator to trick your enemies. Let's talk about the logistics agency now. After Dynahex develops products, they will deliver the products they developed to the nearest logistics center and distribute them to all of Erangel. That's why Roshawk, which is nearest to the tech center, is the best choice. We transformed Roshawk and built it according to the standards of a normal logistics center and divided this area into several major areas for the centralization, classification, storage, inspection, processing, and shipping of goods. You can see that the logistics process is very clear in Roshawk. Goods are centralized and moved via the conveyor belt. Then they are sorted, stored, and processed before they are inspected and shipped. In the process of devising futuristic technological designs, we studied many logistics and intelligent warehouses around the world and their development processes. Based on history, we know that first-generation logistics centers utilized manual sorting and that current second-generation logistics centers utilize 3D conveyor belts, which shows an overall trend towards becoming more automated and increasingly information-based. Regarding the design of the logistics agency, the futuristic changes mainly reflect greater robot autonomy and developments in AI technology. That's why we replaced manual handling with lots of automated conveyor devices and designed the brand new Roshawk Logistics Agency in this way. However, in version 1.5, the logistics agency will not be 100% completed. You will see that there are many construction sites and temporary storage areas here. The intelligent warehouse will be at 70% completion and other buildings such as the logistics headquarters and the distribution area will still be in a preliminary stage of the transformation process. Leaving a large area under construction, we want to use these designs to show players how Aaron Gel is being gradually upgraded, as well as create more tactical experiences for players through these modifications. For example, players can use the cargo moving platforms to sneak around or achieve other tactical purposes. Players can also use the materials at construction sites as natural cover for combat and counterattacks, Juja said. Now, as for Pachinki, which everyone is quite familiar with, Pochinki is one of our favorite urban areas. It is located near the center of Erangel and is an important hub that players must traverse. So, given its unique location, we've transformed Pochinki into the transit center. To make this area true to its name, we've built two hyperline routes on Erangel, which intersect at Pochinki. In this way, players will naturally use this area as a transportation hub for moving around the map. Players will develop this gaming habit on their own, Gentang said. First, we gave Pochinki a triangle-shaped structure and made two main roads converge at the station and extend outwards. Outside the station, we have prepared a parking lot area, commercialized areas renovated out of old residential buildings, public facilities, ongoing construction material sites, and outlying urban areas. This design is to ensure that this large station meets the needs of quick transportation without affecting the life of locals. This area is really interesting. Firstly, 
At the area where the hyperlines intersect, nobody knows if there are any enemies inside the hyperlines that stop in front of them. In addition, the moving hyperlines can easily obstruct players' vision, allowing it to provide cover and evacuation opportunities. It'll be very interesting to play hide-and-seek with enemies here. The double-decker structure also offers players a new experience. At the same time, it won't be overly complicated to have gunfights between the upper and lower floors. The circular structure ensures that there are good shooting angles on both the upper and lower floors, Rick said. Today, we have introduced four areas that have been transformed in Mission Ignition as well as a behind-the-scenes look at the development and ideas of the PUBG mobile team. In the next issue, we'll introduce the two remaining areas and tell everyone more interesting stories about Mission Ignition. See you next time!